Welcome everyone to Talkin' NEPA. I'm your host, Gary Perna. This week on the show, I'm joined by Hazel Tenaria School District Superintendent Brian Uplinger. We're going to talk about the new school year, which kicks off very shortly, and we're going to talk really about what's going on inside the district, some of the new programs, expanded programs, and that word we hear also often, overcrowding. Is there a solution yet, or is the district still being faced with too many students and not enough classrooms? That's all coming up right now on Talking NEPA, so stay with us. For four generations, All-American Chrysler, Dodge, Jeep, and Ram has been treating their customers like family. Stop in to get the lowest financing options and best service around. Whether you're in need of a Ram pickup or have an active family lifestyle or simply want to show off your fun, adventurous side, All-American Chrysler, Dodge, Jeep, and Ram of Tamaqua has a wide variety of inventory to choose from. Stop in for the Labor Day sales event. SJ Kowalski is your Mitsubishi Diamond Contractor. They can install a Mitsubishi Electric Mr. Slim ductless heating and cooling system. Mr. Slim systems are designed to make any living space in your home inviting. You can have a different temperature control for every room in your home. The money saving technology can save you 25 to 50% on your heating bill. For Mitsubishi, Renai, and trained comfort specialists, call SJ Kowalski at 570-455-2600. For over 25 years, Whitetail Preserve Shooting Range, 118 Boulevard Road in Bloomsburg, has provided professionally designed skeet, trap, and sporting clay fields. All stations are handicap accessible with resident NRA certified shooting instructors on site. Packages are available to fit anyone's budget, and there is a restaurant and catering on site. The facility is also available for weddings, business meetings, bachelor parties, private parties of any kind. Call 570-384-2314. WYLN has strong ties to the community and it's committed to important causes like the American Cancer Society and Helping Hand Society telethons. WYLN's commitment to Pennsylvania continues with the broadcast of Hazleton's Fun Fest Parade and the Christmas and St. Patrick's Day parades in Wilkesbury. In the summer, we broadcast the Weatherly and Giants to Spare Hill Climb. And throughout the year, we provide important community services through the broadcast of town meetings, school board meetings, election night coverage, and other community events. WYLN, we're your local network. And welcome back to Talking NEP, everyone, here on WYLN. Thanks for joining us here on WYLN and online. Today, I have the superintendent of the Hazel Tenerio School District with me, Brian Uplinger. And Brian, thanks so much for coming on Talking NEPA. Last time we saw you, we were over on, on Topic A. Right. So, so thanks right. for coming on. Yeah, my pleasure. Thank you for having me. So uh, school starts August 26th. August 26th, yes. And uh, it doesn't seem like summer has like even happen no it's like that fast no it, it's just gone gone by in a blur <laughs> we're ready to go you guys have been very busy over the summer a lot goes on in, in the district um, but you know, first and foremost we, we need to talk about probably the biggest problem that plagues the Hazel Tenery School District and that is overcrowding right. um, you know today as we're taping this show registration is still uh, happening for students to come into the district uh, today on your way up what, what was the number right now that we're looking at students in the district? Uh, we're, we're close to 11,600, give or take. Mm -hmm. and, and again, that, that increases every day. Um, as I was leaving to come up here, uh, there were probably 20 uh, families registering at, at the time uh, that I left the office. Um, so it, it's, it's a constant influx mm -hmm. of students in, in all grade levels. It's right. not just kindergarten, it's not just high school. So we have it uh, systematically across the district. And I know, you know, th throughout the summer, you guys have been working, you know, obviously you have to when you get so many students and an influx that comes in, boundary lines kind of change to where the schools go, uh, you know, what, what area is going to what school. You're also looking at busing, you're looking at how you, you know, all these students will be coming in. Uh, and I know the central office has been working nonstop. So how, how do you guys keep adjusting this? How does it, how does it work? Uh, it's very difficult at times. Mm -hmm. uh, this this year, um, as, a, uh, as everyone knows, we um, transformed the pools in four of our elementary middle schools mm -hmm. to classrooms. Um, we didn't adjust any bound, uh, borders yet or boundaries yet. Mm -hmm. uh, we're going to look at that possibly next year, but okay. we have to do it at, you know, at least a year in advance right. so we can get everything settled. All, all the parents know exactly what is going to happen or where their mm -hmm. students are going to go for the following year. So we'll look at those throughout the course of this year. Um, do we need to slide a boundary here or there? Yeah, probably. 
just to help out a couple other schools that, that may have um, small numbers, right. relatively small numbers, and then uh, to help the other, other buildings that mainly in the city that mm -hmm. are, are very crowded. Uh, so we, we, we have a plan to look at those over the course of the year. And, and I know when we talk about overcrowding, it, it, this, it's such a, a, like an umbrella topic because there's so much that goes into it. Uh, with the, the pools uh, being filled in, where's the, the progress stand on them right now? Uh, they're they're looking great. Uh, we are a little bit delayed at Heights Terrace, mm -hmm. um, but that will that will speed up here fairly quickly. Um, we're not delaying the start of school. I, I know there was a rumor going around that we were delaying, uh, but no, that is that is false. We are going to start on time on on Monday. Uh, there are some things that uh, need to take place at Heights Terrace in order for that to take place. So mm -hmm. our the uh, Mrs. Podlesny, the the principal at, at Heights Terrace, is taking all of that into consideration and moving students where they need to be. Everyone will be accommodated. Mm -hmm. um, later on in the school year, maybe prior to uh, or during the Christmas break, we'll move everyone into their new homes within that building. Uh, and I know that this was such a, a hot topic when it was going on, you know, trying to find rooms, uh, trying to, to take up spaces where we can afford to put rooms in. I know there are a lot of people who were upset when the pools were, were filled in. Uh, one, I know one of the biggest things where you know they said, well, maybe we can work with the you know the high school or the YWCA to get you know swimming lessons or whatever, and then the YWCA closes. Correct. So an another blow to so some things are happening every day. I can just imagine for you as a superintendent, every day something must change, and and having to learn how to roll with the punches, especially in a district this size. Um, you know, wh where do we stand at looking at trying to find more room for our students? It, it's an ongoing conversation we have at almost every school board meeting um, uh, because we we talk about contracts and litigation and things like that. Sometimes it's behind closed doors mm -hmm. just so we can have that, that conversation between all the board members prior to putting it out to the public. Uh, but it's an ongoing conversation on what steps are next. Mm -hmm. you know, we're, we're looking at um, with the, the pool renovations, uh, we, we've acquired 17 classrooms. That still isn't enough. Mm -hmm. uh, we're, we're looking at that only being a Band-Aid, for, right. for lack of a better term. Um, we still need to expand in all of the buildings, and uh, there are some other things that we're looking internally uh, within, the, within those buildings to, uh, to renovate and modernize that would, that would eke out another classroom or two. I know when, um, you know, the beginning of the of 2019, the district was very um, hot and heavy going, looking for a building, looking for, for somewhere uh, to move students to or, or an addition or an expansion. And, you know, it's kind of tapered off a little bit. It, it was, is there any rhyme or reason to it that, that we're, we're not maybe as aggressively looking as we were before? Uh, there are uh, there are the there are some possibilities that we could look at um, adding additions onto some of our existing buildings, uh, which would also be cheaper than um, building a new building. Mm -hmm. Which, um, speaking with our architect, we're looking at fifty million dollars for a new building, so we're we're certainly not going to go in that direction. Um, but looking at at places that that exist mm -hmm. already, um, that we could add on to to some of our buildings and again, maybe move some boundaries or move mm -hmm. some students from one building to another building um, that, that, would, uh, that would assist the overcrowding. Uh, and I know we, we've, we've talked about this so much with, with everything going on. The, the also, uh, I have to bring up about the, the libraries. Mm -hmm. There was discussion about shrinking the, you know, the libraries and all. And, and I guess in this day and age where a lot more is being done on computers and tablets, um, the ways of books maybe in some people's eyes are not as important, um, but the importance of a library is still needed. So, and I know that's one of those boundaries that, y you know, it, the footing there is depending how you f how you right. look at it. But I, I mean, sh w really shrinking the size of the libraries to help that much? Well, and looking at that as a possibility, um, the modernization of those mm -hmm. those facilities. Uh, for example, if we talk about Valley Elementary Middle School, there are two libraries in that building. Do we honestly need two libraries to accommodate the students that are there? Could we renovate both, uh, one, one being strictly for classrooms and the other being strictly for a uh, library? Mm -hmm. Do we put books on um, computers or laptops or, or uh, handhelds? Um, certainly not eliminating any textbooks mm -hmm. or any um, hardback books or any other books that we have right. on the shelves currently, 
uh, but to modernize the facility, modernize the space uh, to make it more um, appealing mm -hmm. and, and students utilizing it more. Uh, going in that direction, I think, would, would certainly help us in uh, providing maybe another 12, 12 classrooms. Okay. We're going to take a short break there. When we come back, we're going to talk about some of the programs that are ex being expanded in Hazel Senior School District and also some of the other things that are going on that we really should be proud of here in the Hazel Senior School District. We'll be right back. Stay with us. Chris and Ashley are working on a new Pocono Mountains magazine. I hear they have a lot of stuff to pull together. You know, we need a magazine. Like a map? Exactly. Somewhere that shows all the great restaurants, date nights, girls weekends, skiing, water parks, and maybe spas? Exactly. Hmm. I have no idea where that could be. Why not get your own copy of Pocono Mountains Magazine at PoconoMountains.com. I'm Gary Perna, news director and reporter for WYLN News. With a decade of experience in local news, I'm proud to be part of the number one local news team, WYLN News. When local news happens, you can count on WYLN News to be there, whether it's in McAdoo, Harrisburg, or right here in Hazleton. We've worked hard to be your number one local news station, and we'll continue to work hard to stay number one. Are you getting the most out of your Medicare coverage? Did you know there are extra benefits available? Dental, vision, hearing, and prescription drug coverage? Don't worry, if you had no idea, you're not alone. Medicare can be confusing. Call Go Medicare today to ask about your dental, vision, hearing, and prescription drug coverage that could be included with your Medicare Advantage plan. That's in addition to hospital and medical coverage often at no extra cost. Make sure you're on the plan that's right for you. Many areas have plans available with $0 copays for many services and $0 deductibles. Plus premiums may be as low as $0 a month. We can help you discover all the benefits you deserve, maximize your health, and minimize out-of-pocket expenses. Call now for your free Medicare coverage review. Please call 800-647-0289. That is 800-647-0289. Hey guys, this is Ray Merrill, Blaze Alexander, Greater Hazleton. If you're looking for a new car, we have GMC Acadias. We have got Cadillacs. We have got Terrains. If you're looking for 0%, we have that. We have up to $10,000 off GMC Sierras. We've got used cars. We have 2016 Sierra Crew Cabs. We have got 2019 Colorados under 28 grand. We've got over 1,800 used vehicles in stock. If you want a great car this August, come on down to Blaze Alexander, Greater Hazleton, or check them out online at blazealexander.com. We're taking the deals the other guys won't. Breaking news, community news, local news, regional news. News that affects you, us, and our community. That's what we do. Every day we work to bring the news and information that is important to you, to us, and to our communities. WYLN, we're your local network. Welcome back to Talking NEPA, everyone here on WYLN. I'm Gary Perna, Superintendent of the Schools for the Hazleton Area School District. Brian Uplinger is my guest today. We're continuing our conversation, and we want to talk a little bit more now about some of the good programs and all the good things that are going on in the district, because sometimes we hear about all the bad things or things that we're kind of like, ooh, but let's talk right. about this new before and after school program, and right. this is something that I know you, get, you guys have been pushing for. Right. Uh, it's a way for students uh, to get additional tutoring, mm -hmm. Um, to get uh, homework help. Um, we may be able to bring in and, and support our ELL students a little mm -hmm. bit better during this time. Um, it's an opportunity for parents to say, yeah, my, my child needs some extra support um, in, in moving it forward. I want to make it clear that it's not a daycare. Mm -hmm. you know, the students that are coming into it, we're gonna, they're going to be working. They're going to be working very diligently on, on their academics. Uh, so we can help them progress and help the district progress overall. Mm -hmm. uh, it's for all students K to six. The the uh, the availability is there for them. Uh, it's twenty five dollars a day. That and that money just goes to support the teachers that are going to be mm -hmm. implementing the program throughout all the building, all the K to six buildings right. in the district. So that again, that opportunity is out there for for families. And for them to to look into it, they have to 
call the the building that their their kid will be in and, and how does that work there's actually there's an application okay. um, what they would need to do is contact the the um, registration office mm -hmm. in the district child accounting uh, mrs. Patricia Jones and she would be able to walk them through the process or send them the application and then they would submit that to the, back to the district mm -hmm. office uh, along with payment and and then we would secure their spot and I think that's such a great thing because um, you know we have a lot of students. You know, I know sometimes you just need a little extra help in something. So to have actually the the teachers who are probably working in it almost every day right. being able to help uh, would be a great help for for the the students. Um, also, this year we're looking at expanding the cyber program, and, and more children are taking advantage of that. So um, you know, it really amazes me how you could do most of your schooling online right. today and and a lot of students and a lot of families kind of like that flexibility with it right absolutely if they're traveling uh, that's a great opportunity for mm -hmm. them to be able to uh, still stay up with their academics um, our we've we've looked at expanding our program uh, from from uh, sixth grade to twelfth grade from uh, to expanding it to third through twelfth grade okay. and then the following year we're going to actually implement our kindergarten through twelfth grade so we'll be completely um, able to uh, mm -hmm. support families that wish to utilize our cyber program um, and I think something else that needs to to be made mention of are the the cyber programs that are mm -hmm. advertised on television they, they say it's a free education it's not a free education um, the the district has to mm -hmm. pay for those students that are in those programs or opt to go to uh, k-12 or right. you know the the agora things like that um, and that that comes out of the taxpayers pocket mm -hmm. uh, so it's it's important to know that we have that option we have that availability for parents to come in and utilize our cyber program right. instead of going outside and and having the cyber program um, through the district allows it to, to still be able to follow the same curriculum that uh, in students in school are using or in classroom I say are using and able to that if a, a teacher or they need help with something you know it's being done here and it is kind of in line with everything that's happening correct yes um, and if if a child remains in the cyber program throughout their career at Hazleton area they graduate from there they mm -hmm. get a, a Hazleton area diploma so that's that's important too to for for families to to realize that 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 availability is there um, with the start of the school year and I think you know last year when you were on my show prior to the start of school I asked you you know what you were kind of looking forward to this year and I know uh, you know last year trying to get everything figured out uh, at where everything went but for this year you know what are you looking for for the district to move forward and I know we, there's a lot that goes on people are amazed at the size of our district and, and you know the amount of staff the amount of students the facilities everything that goes on but at the guy at the top where it all kind of comes to rest you know what are you looking forward to this year uh, continued open and honest communication with families and, mm -hmm. and, and those constituents that are within the district contact me um, if if there's something out there that bothers you uh, that that um, may need to be addressed if I don't know about it I'm not going to be able to address it mm -hmm. so it's important for them to know that they can reach out to me email phone um, call what whatever mm -hmm. uh, I have a, a huge presence on social media so there the kids mm -hmm. find me uh, parents find me so that's important to know that I will get back to them and, mm -hmm. and to know that the the district is doing everything that it can to support the students that are coming through it uh, and and assist them in being successful in their their future career I do have to say what you said about social media um, I you know I follow you on Twitter and I see at the end of the school year a, a lot of students were were tweeting about Hazel Terry and, and you know about you about you know you know thanks for making the seat my senior year great I, I wish you were here you know through my whole school and career um, having that open dialogue with the students because a lot of times you know I think people think well the superintendents in there doing all this other stuff it kind of not involved in the, in the everyday part of the students but you kind of had that involvement where you were in the buildings, in the classrooms, you, you were at the events, the activities that were going on, um, and kind of the biggest cheerleader of the Hazel Tingery School District. Every yeah. time something happened, you were posting about it. And I thought that was really cool to see somebody who is very involved in their job doing this so everyone knows all the great positive things right and and there are so many positive things that are going on in the district and sometimes you know, the we get overshadowed by one negative right. item that, that keeps festering uh, but there are 
many, many different things that are going on in the district that are very positive. And, and yes, to, to get that information out to parents and to students is, is critical. Um, so they understand that, yes, we're, we're moving forward, we're doing good things, and, and um, we, we know what we're doing, and mm -hmm. we can provide a, a wonderful education for the students that are coming through. Um, to your point, um, I, I am the biggest cheerleader for the district. I, I love uh, serving as superintendent. Mm -hmm. I love Hazleton area. I love the kids. Uh, and, it, and it's important for them to know that I'm supporting them, mm -hmm. and they have somewhere to, to come to if they have a question. Um, and I will get back to them or I will meet with them or, or what have you and, and I've done that in the past and I will continue to do that. I've met with student council um, and it's important for the students to have that voice mm -hmm. to say, yeah, this isn't really working. Can you maybe tweak it a little bit? Absolutely. If I don't, again, if I don't know what's going mm -hmm. on, I can't help fix it. In a district this size, um, you know, there's, you have you know, dean of students, vice principals, principals, um, you know, you, you meet with on, on a regular basis, but you know, where each, you, you, I know in some districts, when the large district, each school kind of feels like their own little island kind of that's floating out there. Uh, but you have made a point to make sure that everyone feels that they're in the Hazleton community, right. the Hazleton School District community. Uh, being able to go out to the activities and all the stuff that goes on, you know, how for you it, important is it to know that, well, Valley Elementary and, and McAdoo and, and uh, Freeland and, and Hazleton, th that they, they have to maybe have the same problems, maybe a little different, but knowing that the entire district can work with it and learn from it too. Right, absolutely. Every, every building is unique in, in, mm -hmm. in and of itself because we have diverse population in, in all of our buildings. Um, that it, it's really important to know that yes, if, if there's an issue at Freeland, for example, and, um, there isn't, but just just for discussion's sake, um, that if there's a, an issue at Freeland, hey, here's how we addressed it. Right. So maybe then we can avoid that at Valley or Drums or whichever mm -hmm. other building we have. Um, in in keeping that uh, identity for each of the buildings too, as I, I think is important. So right. each of the communities can say, yes, this is our, this is our middle school, elementary middle school, but eventually all those kids are going to come together. Mm -hmm. So it's important for everyone to know and feel that, yeah, they're a Hazleton area school district cougar, it, it, ultimately, right. um, regardless of where, where they came from elementary middle school. All right, we're going to stop right there. When we come back on uh, Talking NEPA, we'll wrap up our conversation with the superintendent and uh, we'll look forward to see what's going on in this school year as we kick it off in just a few days. Stay with us. We'll be right back. All Care Home Care, providing quality in home care since 1986. Call and see how their team of licensed physical therapists, skilled nurses, speech, and occupational therapists can provide you with exceptional service in the comfort of your own home. They also offer dietitian, home health aid, and medical social worker services. You have a choice in your health care. For safe, friendly, qualified care, call All Care Home Care today and let their team begin taking care of you and your loved ones. Tune in every Sunday night on WYLN from 8 p.m. to 9 p.m. for hard-hitting, high-flying, non-stop action as only Pennsylvania Premier Wrestling High Voltage can bring you. That's Pennsylvania Premier Wrestling every Sunday night on WYLN. I'll see you in the ring. Your exciting new TV experience is here. Smarter, faster, easier to use. With live TV, recordings, video on demand, and streaming apps, all in a single place. When you're looking for something new, recommendations are tailored to you. Voice-powered, personalized results to find what you want faster. And the unlimited potential of smart home. The new experience from TiVo is here. Join us this week on Let's Talk Chiropractic. You're gonna meet Margie Divalso, who has had numerous injuries and good chiropractic care has helped her back on her journey to wellness. Her story this week on Let's Talk Chiropractic. Join us. Yeah, welcome back to Talking NEPA here on WYLN. So uh, we are 
getting into the, the school year here, uh, getting ready to get everything kicked off. Right now, <coughs> we got everyone's getting their back to school shopping done, making sure everything's ready for the first day of school. Um, as always, the first day of school tends to be one of the most chaotic days of the school year, right. uh, if not the most. So, you know, as a superintendent, w what's your message out there to parents, guardians, students, you know, for the, the first week until everything kind of gets worked out to where it needs to be? Right. Uh, be patient. Uh, we're, we're doing our best with 11,600 plus students. Um, uh, there are some things that will go awry. Uh, be patient with the buses getting to school, mm -hmm. picking your students up or children up in the morning and dropping them off in the afternoon. Be, be patient. Uh, there are some tweaks that, were, that took place with some mm -hmm. routes, uh, not major. Uh, so please be patient with that. Um, high school students coming in, be patient with the the process of changing your courses if if there's a something you didn't ask for and it's on your schedule go see the guidance counselor mm -hmm. but be patient you know they they're dealing with a lot of students that are coming in and and something like that may be happening to them as well or they're missing a class mm -hmm. and we need to add it for them again uh, just stressing the please be patient mm -hmm. we we will take care of your issues that that you have i i know that usually the first day or two days of school we get some phone calls up here and <coughs> people who say oh, you know this happened all oh, that happened y you know and uh, yes we know uh, and usually my first phone call is to you and going right. you know I, I got this phone call you know uh, and you're like come on down we'll, we'll just talk about it real quick and get out of, you know, the way so people know what's going on uh, and I think that's the biggest thing you said about you know the buses especially right now construction season is wrapping up uh, everyone knows that Pennsylvania you know we're always under construction, mm -hmm. uh, and that also has to, you know, hinder a lot with the students as well, trying to get the buses around because, you know, big buses you're trying to, right, to move around. Right. So a lot with that. And, and as we, we start the new school year, as always, uh, you know, and I know we don't always talk about it, but the, the safety of the students, making sure the buildings are okay. You know, right. we're seeing more and more how uh, things are, are need to be watched more carefully. The security staff I know does an amazing job at Hazleton, uh, and again, that's one of the things that people just need to be patient and know that things keep changing every right. every day. Right, absolutely, and we're we're looking at adding different types of programs to our mm -hmm. security throughout the district um, that will that will aid us mm -hmm. in um, identifying those individuals that shouldn't be in the buildings. Uh, we're looking at um, different protocols and uh, what have you. you know, mm -hmm. We're we're constantly changing things that um, keeps that perpetrator on their toes and saying, yeah, okay, well, I'm not gonna go there right. um, just because. And something that we, that we have to really um, get our heads around is it's no longer if it's going to happen, it's when it's going to happen. So we have to be prepared. Mm -hmm. we're, we're training our students on emergency lockdown mm -hmm. drills and evacuations and things like that and taking out even though we're, we're mandated to do it, and which we'll continue to do it, fire drills. Mm -hmm. Fire, when's the last time a school caught on fire and people were injured in it? So we're looking at adding additional ways that we can help the students know, okay, this is what happens when there's an intruder or this is what happens when there's you know, something going on in the building. Um, and we're gonna be prepared for that and we're gonna prepare our staff for it and then eventually reach out to the, the community and say, this is what we're doing. Right. And, and just to keep them informed. All right, we are out of time. I thank you so much for coming on. Uh, hopefully, we'll have you back maybe before the end of the uh, before the end of the calendar year, halfway sure. through the school year, to see how things are going. A great. lot happens, uh, Mr. Uplinger. Thanks so much for coming on again. Uh, the superintendent it, it wants to know what's going on, so email him, call him. If you have an issue, go directly to him. Uh, know what's going on in the district each and every day. Thanks for joining us here on Talking NEPA. We'll see you next time here on WYLN.